So in this video we're going to be talking about the early Principate and how uh, Augustus established the Principate and what had to happen afterwards in order to make it a viable means of governing the Roman Empire. So um, uh, Augustus was creating something that uh, was was brand new. The, the the Romans had never had anything like this, and he was establishing something that was very much invested in his person. That was very much um, about the trust that he had, uh, and the trust that uh, Julius Caesar had had before him uh, to uh, to take care of the Roman people. Um, the the princeps is ultimately there in order to be a a father figure, in order to be the pater familias of the entire Roman family, and so as such. Uh, in order to maintain this position, he has to demonstrate uh, the, the proof of that. He has to maintain the trust that uh, um, is placed in him. And the, the trust that's placed in him comes from multiple constituencies. And this is going to be the consistent uh, component of the princeps from this point onward. For the rest of the Roman Empire, what makes the princeps is his ability to maintain the trust of the constituencies that, um, that are, are fundamental to that position. And so... The first of these is the army. Um, the army must have faith in the princeps, uh, must have faith that the princeps is taking care of them. Uh, and uh, this leads to uh, a great deal of effort on the part of, of Augustus and everyone who comes after him to make sure that the army is, is happy and loyal. Um, the alternative is 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 severe because uh, a an angry legion um, or a legion whose loyalty shifts to their own commander uh, is a direct threat to the princeps and to the empire. Uh, likewise, the people, the faith in the people comes from. Uh, um, the, the populist movement, it comes from Marius, it comes from Caesar. It's a, a, a Augustus receives this as the heir of Marius and Caesar. Um, the love and faith of the people as a protection against oppression. And so uh, Augustus make, must make sure that the people are, are loyal, that they are content, that they feel safe, that they do not feel oppressed. At the same time, Augustus, unlike Caesar, must also uh, keep the Senate as a constituency and you know, the, the elite nobility as a general. Uh, in order for the empire not to devolve into civil war again, uh, he must uh, demonstrate to the nobility that he is princeps of all of the Romans, that he is there to preserve um, the, the peace and not fight just for uh, the, the masses like Caesar had. Uh, and also, the Roman Empire, of course, is made up not just of Rome, but of the provinces as well. And this means that the, the subjects, the provincials living in the provinces, must remain happy to be a part of the Roman Empire, um, must uh, remain, uh, uh, you know, to, to retain their faith in, in the, the emperor far away. And um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, part of the, uh, the, the key to um, making sure that this happens is overcoming uh, a couple of fundamental problems with the Principate. And so the first of these, as we've already talked about, is succession. And the, the stopgap that turns out to actually work fairly well, uh, the sort of workaround, is uh, the principle of adoption. And so the principle of adoption allows for uh, a succession of emperors who are uh, chosen for a particular reason, who are adopted as the son of the preceding emperor. And so there's a, um, a, a visible means of, 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 of taking over the principates while the emperor is still alive. Uh, and so during the Julio-Claudians, there's only one instance of of somebody inheriting the principate who is not uh, the adopted son chosen to inherit. The principle of succession also underlines uh, this idea that it is a, a personal uh, trust that is invested in um, one particular man 
as a uh, practically as a private citizen. Augustus does not hold uh, an office, uh, um, you know, in the Roman government. Uh, he holds the power of offices that had been the governing offices under the Republic, but he doesn't hold those offices. He has the, the tools and powers invested in him as a private citizen in order to be able to uh, govern, uh, in order to be able to ensure the safety of, of the empire uh, and, uh, and the city of Rome. And so uh, he approaches the empire itself you know, in in this in this way of, of safeguarding and protecting and ensuring the peace, uh, he shores up um, the the territories that Rome has and uh, and and, uh, and and ensures the, that uh, the policy becomes not to continue to try to expand, but rather to consolidate the Romanness of what is available. Part of the reason for this is continued expansion creates uh, more vulnerability the further away you get from Rome. Um, the, the other part of this is that wars of expansion are fought by generals. Um, the, the generals gain glory, and, uh, and generals with glory um, are, are potential threats to the print caps. And so one of the ways that Augustus works around this is that uh, he ensures that the most important generals are members of the imperial family, um, and uh, you know this, uh, and in particular that uh, triumphs are only celebrated by uh, uh, by his close relatives, and this sort of ensures the idea of the royal family. This sort of ensures the uh, the principle uh, of um, of keeping things. You know, within a a designated means of 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 uh, of, of continuation, um, and uh, you know, the overall goal is to try to, uh, you know, both in in impression and in fact, to maintain a a picture of a stable, solid, and especially prosperous Roman Empire. This is what the uh, the the Pax Romana, the, the Roman peace, is really about. Um, uh, that it is about the uh, the interaction within the Roman Empire. Uh, that that uh, everything is safe for commerce. Everything is safe for the next generation. And what safeguards that is is Rome and uh, the princeps at Rome. What safeguards that is the Augustus. Uh, the the natural conclusion to all this is that when Augustus finally dies, he is uh, deified as Julius Caesar had been, uh, and is uh, regarded as a member of the Roman pantheon. He is deified, and his role continues to be to watch over the Roman Empire and to ensure peace. <clears throat> the uh, uh, the Julio Claudians is the family. Of um, of emperors that follows uh, that includes Augustus and follows after him, um, and uh, what's kind of important about this is, so Augustus is trying to ensure stability at the top of the system, not just through adoption but also through marriage. And so, for example, he marries his only daughter to uh, his most important general early in the Principate, uh, Marcus Agrippa. Marcus Agrippa dies, but uh, he might have been a successor. And so, um, you know, the uh, the connections of his wife Livia, and uh, uh, and so forth, are 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 all uh, drawn into the the role of governing. Uh, you know, uh, Livia's uh, sons Tiberius and Drusus become the bulwark of. Of um, the protection of the provinces and uh, you know the administration of whatever needs administering uh, under Augustus's long rule, uh, and the in the next generation the um, uh, the important figure is Germanicus. Uh, Germanicus is 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 heralded as the the next Augustus, and so um, his death unexpectedly uh, throws up a lot of problems. But so the point is that it's not just about the uh, the emperors themselves; it's about the imperial family, and uh, in many ways as much about the women as about the men. Um, Livia is extremely important to uh, ensuring the the, um, the 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 smoothness of the operation of the principate behind the scenes. Uh, she's 
he's given a lot of, of direct responsibility by Augustus himself. And uh, Livia does uh, uh, a lot to shore up the position of Augustus within the noble families uh, and to, um, to smooth over potential problems. Um, you know, likewise, uh, uh, Agrippina, Germanicus' wife, um, Antonia, uh, Claudius and Germanicus's mother, uh, and so forth and so on. The women of the imperial family hold a very important role in holding the family together and in um, in in fighting within the the Roman families uh, behind the scenes for what to, uh, you know for for the principles that Augustus stands for. Uh, so Tiberius ends up. Uh, in, uh, in, in literally inheriting the empire, he um, he is Augustus's personal heir, um, and is adopted uh, as as Augustus's son. In order for that to happen, uh, he was uh, actually Livius' son by a previous marriage. But by becoming Augustus Augustus's son and heir, uh, he uh, uh, inherits the role that Augustus plays. In uh, in Roman society, and you know he is uh, he's also demonstrated his own worth, his own merit on the battlefield as an administrator. Um, everybody knows that he is an excellent general uh, and a very capable man, uh, very good with money. So the problem that he's um, you know very gloomy uh, in terms of his character and very reluctant to take on this job, as who wouldn't be having to follow after uh, the decades of rule by Augustus, a universally beloved figure. Um, uh, uh, you know his his reluctance is understandable, uh, and uh, you know he is is unable to um, to be as universally beloved the stories begin very early on of of his um, of his uh, uh, you know his moral corruption of his uh, of his uh, carnal behavior um, and uh, you know he becomes increasingly detached but overall the empire you know the, the administration of the empire remains strong his um, his succession and his uh, overall success uh, it demonstrates that this unique thing that Augustus has created and invested in himself could be perpetuated and Rome could uh, have faith not just in Augustus but in a principate uh, to protect him. Um, this uh, falls down a little bit uh, with the, uh, you know, the the uh, Germanicus dropping out of the picture. Germanicus was um, was uh, was going to be uh, the next big hope. Uh, he was a great general, um, you know, like his uncle Tiberius. Uh, you know, he was um, uh, he was. Uh, uh, you know, also unlike Tiberius, very good with people, very popular, very good looking, uh, and so he was uh, the you know the best of both worlds. But uh, you know the the, the he, Tiberius didn't trust him, and so um, this poisons the, his his position in Roman society. Uh, Tiberius was able to engineer uh, accusations against Germanicus that led to Germanicus himself becoming, you know, more and more paranoid, more and more mistrustful, and then Germanicus dies unexpectedly, um, you know, leaving sort of a vacuum. Uh, so when when Tiberius dies. Uh, the the principate falls not to uh, Tiberius, uh, not to Germanicus, but to Germanicus's son, and there was a lot of uh, you know high hopes for this. Uh, Germanicus's son Gaius was uh, you know um, uh, was a direct descendant of Mark Antony and of Augustus and of Livia. Um, you know, he uh, he was. Uh, you know, the hopes were that he would be like Germanicus. He had grown up in the uh, uh, in the field as sort of the mascot of the troops the, that were fighting with his father. Uh, the problem, of course, is that uh, Caligula uh, nobody knew that he was mentally unbalanced. Um, he has some sort of uh, of long lasting fever early on in his principate. He comes out of it. Uh, um, extremely, uh, um, uh, 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 
you know, uh, extremely uh, incapable. And, uh, you know, he starts uh, in with his wild behavior. Uh, he starts uh, uh, trying to get people, to, uh, forcing people to treat him as a god. Uh, uh, he has an uh, affair with his sister, uh, all of this behavior. And the, so the whole problem with Caligula is that uh, it, it reveals a second problem with the whole idea of the Principate, which is that, you know, the first problem is that there's no mechanism for succession. Uh, Augustus got around that by by making use of the old Republican stopgap of uh, adoption of an heir. The second problem is now revealed: there's no mechanism for removing a princeps once he uh, is discovered to be unsuitable, and uh, this is a serious problem because uh, it's it's inherent in the idea of it not really being. A, a government's office. It's not really a monarchy. Uh, it, it, there's no way of choosing one except by the, the previous princeps, and there's no way of getting rid of one. And so Caligula ends up being assassinated by his own guard, and this obviously sets a terrible precedent um, for uh, you know opening up the the, uh, the the dangers of assassination to future emperors and uh, you know this only serves to make the emperors more paranoid uh, more removed um, you know more uh, inclined to uh, to push down any potential threat and resort to uh, uh, resort to uh, um, to uh, oppression uh, even before Caligula's assassination, Tiberius and Caligula had uh, had uh, had conducted treason trials, uh, attempting to silence dissent. Anybody that uh, spoke ill of the emperor of the imperial family was uh, accused of capital treason, and uh, even more insidiously. Uh, the people who had brought the accusation were entitled to a share of the estate uh, of the uh, of the accused should he be convicted, and so um, this uh, perpetuated an atmosphere of of fear amongst the nobility in Rome uh, that uh, only had the potential to get worse. Um, you know, it should be noted that uh, the. Um, the, 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 the problems with the emperors in terms of how they behave and so forth, a lot of this affects only the people immediately around the emperor in Rome. In other words, the people of, of what had been the ruling class of the, of the Republic, uh, um, the, you know, the, the people that are further down the scale, uh, uh, the, the middle classes and lower classes in Rome and uh, the armies and the, the provincials, uh, they've uh, experienced the benefits of the of the stability of the Roman Empire and the 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 the, uh, the excellent functioning of the imperial institutions and of of the of the empire's economy, which is uh, which is uh, uh, better than anything that anybody could have expected. Um, the the only the main way in which the behavior of the emperor can start to have an effect on the the remainder of the empire, the uh, the people outside the nobility, is through overspending. And this is a, this is one of the problems with Caligula. Is whereas Tiberius had left a a surplus in the treasury, uh, Caligula spends everything uh, and uh, and goes into um, uh, into even more spending. Uh, uh, drains the treasury and, and leaves the emperorship uh, uh, in extreme distress, which becomes a problem for uh, his successor, his uncle Claudius, who was, uh, after the assassination, found by the Praetorian Guard and, uh, and, and made emperor, whether he liked it or not, whether the Senate liked it or not. And we'll continue talking about this in the next video.